Hello everybody, it's the Historical Gamer once again, and today we're going to be taking a first look and a sneak peek at an upcoming DLC pack for Unity of Command 2. This is the first DLC that is coming out with the uh, sequel to the Unity of Command uh, classic. Uh, and Unity of Command 2, the original game, focused heavily on the Western Front. If you remember, Unity of Command 1 was sort of an Eastern Front uh, game, uh, a game about... Um, fundamentally about logistics in the Eastern Front in a turn-based, sort of light, easy-to-pick-up-and-play war game, but also a, a pretty difficult-to-master one. Unity of Command 2 took that same concept, enhanced it, added some additional uh, options and tools to allow you to do things like attack fortifications and other things like that, and then brought the uh, the game back to the Western Front, focusing on the Western Allies. So Unity of Command's 2 campaign will put you in the shoes of the Western Allies. You played through from 1943 in North Africa through to the, uh, the fall of Germany and the West. Um, but Unity of Command 2 Blitzkrieg, which is the first DLC pack for Unity of Command 2, uh, moves things forward a bit and changes uh, the side that you get to play as. So the campaign, anyway, the, the battles, you've always been able to play either side. But in the campaign of Blitzkrieg, you start in 1939, you're in control of the German armored, for armed forces, and you basically are able to play through a... Uh, a campaign that I believe has up to 13, I think there's 25 total scenarios, but there's up to 13 missions, I believe, in the campaign, uh, which takes place from 1939 with Germany's invasion of Poland uh, through to 1941, uh, including some hypothetical scenarios. So there's, I think, 13 historical scenarios and 12 uh, hypotheticals, I believe it is, um, from, you know, the invasion of Poland, the invasion of Norway, the invasion of France, but then also hypothetical invasion of uh, Britain and Sea Lion and other things like that. So that's what we're going to be taking a look at tonight. Um, in terms of some of the new features or capabilities uh, that are introduced, you know, obviously moving the, the game forward uh, a couple of years and putting you in the shoes of the Germans, there are some different areas that the game uh, buffs up some, some of the capabilities. So, for example, uh, there are things like fixed fortifications, which didn't really exist before, but they need in order to model the Maginot Line. Um, there are Army Group and Panzer Group headquarters, which is something that uh, didn't really exist uh, before. There's long-range transfer, uh, which I guess allows German headquarters to transfer steps or reinforcements uh, anywhere within their command range, not only between adjacent units. Uh, there's a Kampfgruppe, uh, which is a uh, ability to have like a massively upgraded German headquarters unit that can deploy uh, security groups, which are Kampfgruppens, uh, that can then reorganize stragglers uh, that are found within uh, within those territories and then bring them back um, to become active immediately. Uh, there's some additional level, I guess level three force pool is one of the features, the ability to oversupply your units, um, the ability to have, uh, you, there's some additional air unit options. So there's a JU-87 precision bombing capability, uh, which is a theater asset, which is I'm assuming similar to the tactical airstrikes, but it's a little bit different. It, it's very uh, devastating per my understanding. And then the same thing for the flying artillery, uh, which basically simulates Stukas and other things like that, uh, giving massive suppression to enemy units and also um, a huge percentage, a 50% chance of destroying fixed fortifications. So there's a number of uh, increased or, or new functionality to sort of help model the, uh, the German invasions of uh, 1943 to 41. Um, this game does come out on November 5th. I may have already said that. Uh, and with that being said, we're going to be we're going to be playing the campaign or starting the campaign tonight. So let's go ahead and jump in. It is 1939. Germany's appetite for expansion is in, is insatiable. Only one year after occupying Austria and the Czech uh, heartland, Hitler sets sights are now set on Poland. This time, France and Britain will take up arms as the Allies slowly mobilize. The Poles become the first people to face the full force of Germany's new Panzer armies. They won't be the last. Uh, we'll name our save the Butcher Offensive, and we will get going. Ah. Oh. Gotta add some underscores, I guess. Are you talking about the audio? I'm 
I'm not showing dropping any frames, so unless the audio is like messed, I think I think it might be on your end. <laughs> Germany 1939 equals a hungry hungry hippo. Okay, so we are in the first conference uh, group. As you, you remember, sort of you get these different uh, breaks between operations where you get to pick new cards that give you additional theater assets uh, during the game. So we have to pick uh, cards to fill out our deck, although it looks like we have the same number of cards that we can fill the deck with. So I guess we're just going to go with JU-52 Supply Drop. Um, well, I guess we don't even select them. We just, we just get these. Um, so we'll get Opal Blitz Transport, BF-109 E5 Air Recon, two of those, one HE-111 Bomber Theater Asset, and then a JU-52 Air Supply. There are two, two armies here that are within our command that we can upgrade. There's uh, Heersgruppe B under, under Fyder von Bach, uh, and then there is Heersgruppe A, which is under Gerhard von Rundstedt. Uh, you can see both of these are currently upgraded uh, to level 8 range for their supply trucks. You can see force pool level 1, the ability to de deploy steps, reorg steps, or transfer steps at long range are all here. We also have the emergency supply uh, capability, repairing bridges, river crossings, and entrenchment fortifications capabilities. Both of these armies are uh, true. Sorry, not true. Both of them are identical, so nothing's been upgraded yet. You can see here that uh, Heergruppe B will be in charge of operations in Poland in the north of the Vistula River. Later, it will support the attack in the west by seizing the Low Countries or even Switzerland, depending on the path chosen. Uh, Heergruppe B will be led by General Fieder von Bach, a highly ambitious and determined officer. He will prove to be a shrewd and adaptable field commander, but differences with high command will lead to his removal from command in Russia in 1942. In this campaign, HGB will not have the same intensity and scale of operations as HGA, but is still needed to develop a reasonable operational flexibility and command skills. Uh, Hergruppe A, uh, with a total force of some 45 division, will undertake the main German assaults on Poland and France and will hit the beaches at Dover if Operation Sea Line goes ahead. So this is going to be our primary army. So it seems like B is our supporting army, A is our primary army. I don't know why B is on top and A is on the bottom. That seems weird, especially just from an alphabetical perspective. Uh, it's led by uh, Gerhard von Rundstedt, uh, a man Montgomery described as the best the Germans had. He's a leader of impeccable strategic judgment and the ability to get the best out of his subordinates. Um, blah, blah, blah. Okay. All right. So it's a conference, but there's not really anything to do because I can't really, you know, this... Actually, no, I do have to pick these. So um, we get to pick... Oh, I do have to spend money on these? Whatever. Forgot about that. All right, so I have to spend my prestige on these cards. You just see we spent, what, some 75? No, I can't do math. 85 prestige to get all those cards. Uh, we can also spend some prestige here to upgrade these headquarters. So I think for A, we probably want to upgrade. I think set piece attack is useful. So we'll, we'll get the operations one. And then I'm kind of tempted to spend another 50 or so on the um, faint attack and suppressive fire. That tends to be very useful. I'm not as concerned with uh, destroying bridges. Assault crossing would probably be nice. Uh, and maybe Kampf group and security unit. So we'll do these two. That's 75 more. That brings our prestige down to 65. Uh, if we go to B, do we need anything? I mean, we probably want the set piece attack for B as well. So drop 25 on that. Um, and then we'll drop another, well, we'll drop 25 to extend the range of group A, and that's going to be it for our prestige here. Okay, so you can see here we've extended A's range out to 10, basically because the game told me they're going to be my primary offensive army in, in on this front. We also got the uh, Kampfgruppens, which allow us to sort of pick up stragglers and deploy them into the, into the units. Uh, whereas B just upgraded the operations capability to level 1 to get the set piece and the no retreat order uh, commands. Uh, B has 6 command points, A has 6 command points. Uh, we have 15 prestige left. I mean, we've already picked all of our cards, so there's no real... I mean, we could have recycled some of the cards here, uh, but I think these are a decent starting point to, to go with. 
So if we take a look here, the Northern Europe is going to be our only campaign theater at the start. Looks like there's three operations in Poland to be fought uh, at the start of the war. So we'll go ahead and end the conference because there's nothing else for me to do in the conference at the moment. And you can see here our three missions here are the Danzig Corridor, uh, the Milwa, Mi Milwa to Modlin, and the Polish Plan. So each one of these takes place on September 1st, uh, at least according to up here. Uh, the Danzig Corridor at 044 on the 1st of September 1939, the obsolete German battleship Schleswig von Holstein, or I guess Schleswig Holstein, trained its guns on the Polish positions in Vest Westerplatte. One minute later, it fired the opening shots of what would become the bloodiest war in human history. Outnumbered, outgunned, and only partially mobilized, the Polish defenders brace as the Wehrmacht is, un is unleashed upon them. So presumably, this will be the assault on the forts in Danzig. The following mission will be uh, Army Group B, so up here, uh, continues its weaker force than its sister formation conducting the main attack on the south. Still, its task is vital as it forms the northern pincer to the German plan to encircle the Polish army at the capital of Warsaw. And then the third operation in this uh, this set group is the Polish plan, which is the main effort by the Germans. The attack on Poland with Army Group A, Sud, it forms the southern pincer in the plan, double involvement of the Polish army. Although numerous uh, the Polish formations facing von Rundstedt's forces are neither formally mobilized nor wisely positioned. So it looks like this is a 12 scenario battle, an 11 scenario battle and a eight scenario battle. There are no secondary objectives with the Danzig Corridor, our first battle. The second battle, there is a sec secondary objective to take Northern Warsaw, uh, and the third battle is to take Warsaw itself. So if you take Warsaw in either the Northern or the Southern operation, you actually open up the alternate history option, which can lead you down the path of invading England. If you don't take Warsaw, that secondary objective, then you'll stay on the historical track, at least for now. Uh, down those those various battles that you can fight in future future battles. But first things first, let's jump right into the Danzig Corridor. <laughs> Newhauser, SEO, Lake, Lakel, good to see you all. OKW Dispatch, your orders are to cut off and occupy the so-called Polish Corridor. You massively outnumber the thinly spread Polish forces in the area. Furthermore, the Luftwaffe Kriegs and Kriegsmarine assets are at your disposal should uh, aid your efforts greatly. Uh, finally, time is of the essence. OKW plans to divert your mobile divisions east in the support of the northern push on Warsaw. Direct action, it, just so you know, they did, I think they announced today it comes out on the 5th. So this is a very small map here. You can see this is sort of, I think, what, Eastern Prussia over here. Uh, you've got Danzig sort of in the middle here, the Danzig Corridor, one of the, the major objective here. But there's three objectives we have to take. We have to take Danzig by turn five for a major victory, but just by the end for a victory. Uh, we have to take, um, goodness, I don't want to offend anyone, but I'm bad at pronouncing these words. Uh... Bidegorsk, uh, down here. That one needs to be taken by turn three for a major victory. And Turn, uh, which needs to be taken by turn five for a major victory. Um, yeah, I mean, there might be better World War II games direct, but the aesthetic of Unity of Command is so damn good. You're 100% right on that. So you can see here in northern Germany, we've got a bunch of units as well as some panzers here along the border. Are these mechanized units or what, what are these guys? This looks like the second ID, a motorized infantry division. Uh, we've got the third Panzer, German Panzer division, the third ID. So we've got a bunch of infantry divisions, a couple of motorized divisions here along the German border. Uh, it also looks like there's a secondary objective of the Tokola Forest uh, up here. So if we go back to um, our objectives, I'll just actually click here. Um, you can see here we have bonus objectives. Grzeg. Uh, by turn three, the Tukula Forest by turn four, and Gdania by turn five. Uh, if we, we get bonus prestige for taking any of these objectives, so 20 prestige here, 20 here, and then we also get uh, some headquarters points, I think it is, uh, for taking this objective. So what units do we have at our disposal? Um, let's see here. So this is the deployment phase. We also get the 208th Infantry Division on turn three, at turn two and the 73rd Infantry Division on turn three. So we have some troops here, a brigade of Erdhard Infantry. 
Uh, they have one specialty, which is some artillery here, that allows them to uh, probably bombard uh, Danzig. You can see the supply situation if we, if we click on this. Uh, it looks like all our troops are going to start in supply. Now, we probably will benefit from driving east along this rail line here and then northeast along this rail line here. Those are probably going to be our two major points of advance. Maybe driving along the roadway here along the coast um, with the these troops in the north. But we do have one uh, additional truck uh, for our supply line, so we can increase our supplies to give us a better better coverage of our fronts. Um, I'm not going to do that quite yet. Uh, I think the armored offensive is going to drive east along this railway here to stay in supply. Probably try and knock out this Polish unit, drive on the forest, and then north on Danzig. Uh, we may break off here on this roadway to go toward the objectives in the south. Uh, meanwhile, I'd say these three to four infantry divisions will first try and cover their flank by attacking the 26th Polish Infantry Division, uh, maybe even making a stab for the supply depot down here to the south with one of those units, and the rest will advance directly east along the rail line. Um, for a little while, the armored and the infantry may be able to support each other, but as they drive further, they're going to diverge. Uh, we'll see when we get to this town up here if the armor needs to swing east to stay on this rail line here to support the southern offensive. The idea that the Polish have two objectives here in the south means they're probably going to be stronger down here. Meanwhile, on the northern front, I'm going to take these two divisions, drive them along the roadway here uh, toward uh, this secondary objective, and then also helping to flank Danzig. And then these three infantry divisions, one of them is going to assault, assist the assault on Danzig, protecting the flank along this railway. And then these two will drive directly south on Turn. Again, I'm not sure how much strength the German or the Polish have against us. We'll see. This is the first scenario in the campaign, so we will we'll see what that what that reflects as. Um, the dots are steps, which is sort of like a, an interpreted strength. So some units are stronger than others. You can see there's five dots here. There's, you know, smaller dots on other units. So it's sort of an interpretation. But each one of these units is, is an infantry division, unless stated otherwise. So the guys down here apparently are a brigade. Um, this is a, a group, an infantry group, I guess. Uh, this 21st ID, 21st Infantry Division, 28th Infantry Division... Um, you know, 20th motorized infantry, tw second motorized infantry. I think actually maybe what we'll do is we'll have the motorized infantry go along the rail line and we'll have the uh, armor swing east toward the rails and then they'll and then or then they'll drive south to support the assault south. There's a lot of big rivers in here that'll get in, in the way and kind of slow us down. I don't have anything really to deploy. I'm not going to deploy my extra um, my extra units, I don't think yet. Maybe we want to overstrength some guy. Well, we don't have any reserves. We can reorg steps, but I'm not going to do that. That'll weaken our units there. I, I don't have any prestige units. I can't use prestige to purchase additional units for these guys. So sometimes, well, I can for some of these guys. So I can give these guys 88 millimeter flak guns. Uh, we could you spend some prestige to give this uh, division some extra infantry. What I actually I think I'm going to look at is this brigade here going after Danzig. They're out of range for HQ, so they don't have anything. What about these guys out of range? Uh, these guys up here, what can we... I don't really see a need to just do flak. That's probably not needed yet. So I think we'll save the prestige for now. Meanwhile, this headquarters group, the army headquarters group... Eh, I think maybe we want to move them. I'm not sure. I, I think you're better off being on major roadways and rails... But the idea that these northern troops are completely out of contact with the HQ and so are all these troops in the east makes me a little uneasy. Um, it will influence some of their reinforcements. But yeah, we'll just we'll just go as is. Yes, this is the attack on the Danzig corridor. So there will be a second drive on, on uh, Warsaw from the north in the next scenario. Okay, so we have an air attack option. We could attack Danzig with our air attack. That makes the most sense to me. I also... Do I have those other command or options? Those other types of attacks? It doesn't look like it yet. I think I might have to unlock some of that stuff. So, first things first. Let's get one of our motorized divisions here. Actually, let's do this. Let's use our air, air units to recon here. So we'll recon in the rear a bit. Looks like there is a Polish infantry division down here. I was hoping it would have a wider dispersion, but it didn't. 
Uh, we do have a naval bombardment that is available to us, but it is it leaves the scenario after the first turn, so we need to use it now. So we'll bombard Danzig with our naval forces. All right, so the city's in ruins, and the unit's basically completely suppressed. You can see it lost three step suppression items. So if I hover over it with this infantry unit here, we'll get a one to two attack in our favor. I'm guessing we'll probably drive him off too. No, we didn't. Interesting. Well, that's frustrating. Uh, shit. Obviously, this unit, this this city here has some units in it. Um, crap. Let's see here. So we can use our motorized infantry here to drive behind this unit, attack these guys. We didn't wipe them out, which is a little bit unfortunate. Um, I'm going to move this infantry division to take these prisoners. We'll then attack the remnants of that division here. This mechanized force can move again. I'm guessing there's a... We don't have recon over the Tukula Forest, but I'm guessing there are some enemy units there. So let's move these guys one hex east. I'm correct. There are units there. So move these... Uh, that'll be out of three. Armor attacking enemy troops in a forest. Maybe not the smartest decision. So we won't do that. All right, let's use our air units here to bombard these guys. And it did nothing. Great. Hmm. All right, we'll see if we can drive this infantry back. So we just destroyed those guys and overran them and then went in and took their prisoners. Nice. So the supply situation is going to get messy here real fast. Actually, these guys are all going to be in supply next turn. Nice. That's surprising. These little dashes mean that the units are in supply. If there's a little red icon here, it can represent the supply could be disrupted. If you get the red square with this red dot in the middle, that indicates that there, a unit in that hex will be out of supply. All right, so we've basically, this is going to be very nice because we've driven in here and we've now cut the rail line here to the south. So I think these Polish units in the north might actually be, no, they'll still have a supply line coming up from Gr from Grudages or however you pronounce that. Uh, that'll be feeding supply in through these guys, but they're on a very, they're in a very precarious situation at the moment. Okay, so we didn't drive those guys back. But I can cut supply to Danzig by moving this infantry unit here, the 21st ID, across this rail line. So there should be no supply in the north here. Unless they've got a depot in Danzig, which is possible. We'll also move these guys up to attack the enemy unit in Danzig. And then we'll take Danzig. So we've taken Danzig on turn one. That gives us an immediate prestige boost. All of these guys are still going to be in supply. We do have some stragglers represented by this icon here. I don't think these Polish forces here are a risk to counterattack. These guys up here I think should be out of supply. Hmm... Really need some like arty to drop on. So advance up this railway here. We'll leave these troops just kind of protecting their flank against a Polish crossing of that river. So we're moving on the rail line east toward this other objective over here.
You guys arguing about Hearts of Iron over there? All right, so I think that about does it for this turn. The By the way, the when you have an orange item around you, that indicates you can still attack this turn. Blue means you can't, but in some cases you can still move. All right, all of these troops here are still in contact with HQ. I'm going to move the HQ here forward a little bit. Move it over here along this town. That'll allow us to project our, our headquarters a little bit further forward. We still, all these guys are going to be out of headquarter contact. So that does influence like their ability to get reinforcements. And I think it influences their fighting effectiveness. But just given the nature of, of Eastern and Eastern Prussia being cut off from the rest of the, the line, that's a little bit of a inevitability. We have pocketed the one, I think just one Polish unit in the north here. Uh, we also have a strong blocking force on this railway here south, so I don't think there's much of a risk of a counterattack north against these guys anyway. Um, and then we'll be making a move on the Tukula Forest next turn. I'm not going to deploy my headquarter unit or my, my extra supply unit because I don't see a need to, so we'll go ahead and end the first turn. We've taken one of the three objectives already, and uh, that's good news for us. Shit, the Polish did cross the river and cut the rail line there. I'm, I think we still have supply. Oh, so, I'll have to take a look. And no, we don't. Our supply only comes through on this railway. This apparently railway up through Neustein does not provide supply. So our entire front is out of supply. That's great. Um, fuck. All right, we're going to pound these guys. They're in the open. Knock out three of their support. We'll bring this division down here. Let's actually do this. We've got an airdrop supply, so we're going to use our supply card here for an airdrop. So these guys will be in supply. They'll move south. Attack these guys. We're now cornered. Um... The fact that we haven't destroyed them is a problem. I could destroy them if I could move these guys. I can't move these guys back, though. You can't swap. Erg! Well, that's a problem. Okay. The guys in the east are still in supply. Let's attack here. Because they still have rail connection with the supply depot and Elbing, which has supply that comes through. All right, we are taking some casualties here, and casualties do add up over time, so that's something you need to you need to be aware of. You you do as you lose units permanently, um, those casualties will affect the unit. Oh shit. One of our units just got KIA, but we did take the objective. We'll upgrade later, maybe? I don't want to spend the prestige to do that right now. Alright, so we overran here. Wouldn't these Polish units? They are out of supply. Um, can I swing up behind there? I don't have any recon to tell me what's back here. My units are going to be even weaker next turn, however. We'll go with an attack there. Two KIA... We lost one. Okay, that should get us back into supply now because I now have a direct rail connection with the east. So if we take a look here, we will get our units back into supply because we now link this railway directly with Eastern Prussia's railway line off the map. 
So I took a few more casualties than I would have liked there, but we did. We did drive them back. Okay. Alright, so... That should be good for us next turn. If we take a look here, all those units should be back in supply. We can drive our armor up here and probably finish off the remaining units in the north and free the rest of our troops to drive south, or we can try and drive our, our units south to knock out some of these, these Polish troops on these fortified towns. I'm going to cross this river. Let's see if we can't eliminate this threat. These guys, if they pull back across the river, I'm going to go for their headquarter, their, their supply, mainly to ensure that they can't do that to me again. Also, there is a risk these guys could maybe try and move east across this bridge. Can any of these guys still move? So I'm actually going to drive up here with my armor. These guys are surrounded. I'm a little worried they might be able to move east across this bridge. I don't think they should be able to. But we'll find out, I guess. Okay. Advance along this railway. Are those guys going to be in supply along that railway? No, that armor's going to be out of supply. Huh. Okay. Well, it's not great, but that's going to end turn number two. The Polish didn't move at all? No, we're still turn two. Upgrade B. It's trying to tell me to upgrade my headquarters. Okay. Uh, do we want to get the specialized enhancement? The entrenchment level? I'll take the command points, actually. It'll increase the range. Yes, I know there are things I can still do. All right, so the enemy pulled back off that rail line there. Meanwhile, they reinforced the troops on that other objective, which we actually have to take today to get the, the 20 prestige bonus. Meanwhile, the bulk of our units are back in supply. Our armor is out of supply for a second turn. I'm going to try and bomb these guys. And then use... I can't use Artie against them. It doesn't look like I've got that capability yet. We'll use a resupply option here. Hit these guys from the rear. Three casualties on them. I can actually attack twice. Nice. Um, I guess we'll just attack twice and wipe them out then. We lose a little bit of suppression there. I can attack again because that was an overrun, I think. But we're not going to take that, that other objective today. Um, we also didn't take... Bidogusk by turn three either. We'll take those prisoners. Okay. These guys are going to drive south on that uh, supply depot and take those supplies for themselves. Then they're going to attack these guys from the rear. I had to manually move over that one hex there, but we now have reestablished supplies with the west rail line there as well, and we've now um, destroyed that Polish threat south of Shinermul. Okay. I'd like to do like a set piece attack or an artillery strike on these guys, but it doesn't look like I'm allowed to, so we'll just have to do the one infantry attack here. We did lose some casualties, but we inflicted some on the enemy too. Okay. All 
I don't like that I have to take those kind of losses to try and drive them back. Still out of command over here too, so I need to move this headquarter unit to get these guys in command. Um, what if I move them over here? No. We'll undo that. Move them over here. All right, so this will get everybody on the front in contact with the enemy back in, in headquarters. So we're just a random headquarter unit along the railway. Okay. Not gonna attack here any more than I already have. Uh, did I not deploy one of my units? I've got new units. I need to deploy them. Okay, so we're probably not going to win a decisive victory here because we're not going to take these objectives all by, like, turn four, turn five, etc. Main The main holdup has been on this, this bridge here with these troops. We turned north a little bit too much. I can extend movements with with uh, with mouse wheel. Oh, you mean switching units like this here? Yeah. Not sure there's a huge benefit to doing it for some of these guys. So we can do the non-combat moves. I mean, I can dry. I don't want to move on turn because I'm pretty sure there's going to be bad guys there. So I'll just get chewed up if I try and advance into a hostile enemy tax. I could swing south here and see if I can't cut these guys off from supply by taking this railway. Uh, okay, so maybe not. Are they still going to be in supply across the river? They are not, so we are going to pull back across the river. Yep, I know some units haven't moved. Stacks behind the lines. Um, I do have some disrupted units that we can probably spend some time getting them upgrade, you know back to the front. They're stragglers, if that's what you mean. Meanwhile, we failed our bonus objective. One of them. Alright, so let's... First things first. Um, I don't have the artillery option because I haven't, I guess, upgraded for the artillery bombardment for this northern army yet. So, let's hit these guys with air. It did reduce their support, so that's good. My armor, I guess, will attack. They'll breach their line, drive them back. Then our infantry will attack and overrun. My armor will drive south and overrun. They should still be in supply there. Yep, they're on the railway. So turn is in danger. Which we can still try and take by turn five. Does that actually keep those guys in supply there, too? Yeah, they're along the railway there. Um, so... Can't do set-piece attacks. Gonna try and move up into the rear here. These guys aren't gonna have good supply, but we can try and um, maybe airdrop them some supply next turn. All right, actually this infantry can attack with a zero to two, so we'll do that. I can then pull back. We can then move our mechanized troops forward maybe. Two to one, one to one, 
We'll do one to one. We get three support. I don't have a lot of options for creativity here because it doesn't look like at my headquarters is enough, is upgraded enough to really be able to accomplish much yet. Meanwhile, we just took that objective, drove the enemy back, but now we'll be attacking across a major river, so we'll get a, a pretty big penalty on that attack if we try and launch it. Got more units than I know what to do with here, but we did take the objective in any event. All right, let's deploy one of our depot, a network here to the front so we can keep these guys all in supply as they move on that next objective. I probably don't want to get too crammed in because I would like to try and pull units off after they attack Turin. Hopefully tomorrow is the next, the last, last day. Yeah, I mean, this could be an easy-ish scenario to try and reintroduce me to the game. It's been a little while since I've played it much. All right, so... Two units are in supply disruption. Operations are covered for Headquarters Group B. Force pool were covered, and we also got six stragglers to our, our force pool. So first things first, let's bombard Turin. That didn't do anything. I hate the idea of using my armor here to attack. I don't like taking casualties. And, oh, we didn't take any there. Good. Sure am taking a lot of them, though. These guys are set to no retreat. That was a pretty bloody repulse for us. These guys back. Okay, they finally retreated. There we go. So we took the last objective. I mean, that should pretty much be it. Any of these guys get reinforcements that full or stragglers that were recovered? I don't know if I can deploy them on units that haven't moved. I guess we'll get these back in supply. But that should be it. So we'll end the turn, I think. Get those disrupted units back on their supply lines. Uh, we took the two secondary object, two of the three secondary objectives taken by their turn, and then all three primary objectives taken, two by their their turn, one not. So there we go. <laughs> In terms of it being easy, it's pull in 1939. It's not like it's the fairest fight. True, you're victorious. All primary objectives have been completed. Uh, there's no more bonus objectives left. You can end the scenario now. You may also continue for a few more turns if you want to. I don't know that continuing a few more turns is going to do much other than cause us to take casualties. Um, I guess we could, just if we want to mop the floor with them. Take some prisoners. I just am going to be very careful about like actually taking losses. All right. Okay. We can't even reach these guys. Uh, damn it. Are we going to be in supply next turn? Or not? Well, because of this headquarter unit, which apparently you can't... I don't get why you can't, like, attack headquarters units. But for some reason, they occupy a spot that I can't move on to. So we'll end the turn, and we'll finish them off. Oh shit, I just lost the objective. Smart. Smart. Whatever, that was done by them. Easy retake of the, of the objective there. Took the prisoners. Also capture the enemy headquarters unit, so we get a bunch of bonuses for that and pretty much take the entire map now there's like oh no we have taken the entire ma map map we we stack white them all right victory let's get these guys back on supply I'm assuming these railways are all in supply now all right so we're good victory uh the scenario ends 
And then what happens, arrow, is you go to a new scenario. So. All right, objective completed and the scenario. So Axis victory, we scored 163 enemy KIA, 11 units, 19 prisoners. We lost 11 units of our own, four armored units, 11 infantry units. Um, I'm not sure those numbers don't seem to add up, but in any event, congratulations, a victory. Well done, Soldaten. All right, so we have won the Danzig Corridor. Uh, and now we're moving on to Milwa to Modlin or the Polish plan. I think we actually can do them both. Uh, but we get to pick which one we want to do first. I think the Polish plan is going to be a larger scenario. It's a turn longer. And uh, it's the main effort with Army Group A. Army Group B, meanwhile, uh, is chilling out here. The ones that we just used in this last battle, we can fight the Mil Milwa to Mod Modlin. So we'll go ahead and do that. And we'll fight the second scenario in the uh, Blitzkrieg DLC pack here, the second scenario in the invasion of Poland. But we'll look at that scenario next time. Until next time, this is the Historical Gamer saying once again thank you very much for watching. Hope you guys enjoyed the episode, and I'm out.